Hello, my name is Andrew Wilkinson, and today we're going to look at changing a user's name. One of the constant challenges an IC administrator faces is the changing of the names of the people that work for them and thus change a username object. While the work completed in a call center is often consistent, people never are. They are constantly changing as individuals, and one reflection of this is the frequent change of names for all manner of reasons. The change of names leads to a sensible change of name for the matching user object, thus preventing scenarios where the individual does not have their new name properly reflected in the system via reports, directory columns, etc. The point of this upcoming section is we're going to look at how to avoid that kind of confusion caused by names changing. Before we get into the product, there are a few key points I want to look into. One. Almost counterintuitively, compared to the name of this just-in-time video short, usernames in the system cannot be changed. The reason for this is we have a distinction between the name of the user object that a person logs into and the name of the person themselves. The user object has what we call a user name. There's a column for that in the user's container. The username is a unique identifier in the system, and once it has been created, it cannot be altered because it is tied to a lot of very specific identifiers in the background that we don't see that are tied to that username. Secondly, first and last name can be changed. The reason is first name and last name do not describe that specific user object. They describe the person that the user object was created for. So they are under the personal info tab under the user object itself. And then finally, the third thing is a new user object can be created. In a situation where an individual's name changes and a new user object is created such that you do want the actual user object to have the same name as the actual person, you can simply create a new user object and delete the old one. Now what will happen is the old one, all of the data that had been put into the database for that old user would still remain. Just no new data would be generated because you've deleted that user object. But again, all the old data that was associated with it would still be in the database. And then the new user object that you created would now be tracked from then on separately. There is no connection. There's no way to tie those two together but that is one method that can be used. Okay, so let's dive right into the product. Here we are in the product on the IC server, and we are in the user's container, and in here we have the column username. Now, as I mentioned, username does not necessarily need to be tied to the name of the physical person that will be using that user object. This is the name of the object in our system that is used to contain information about the person who will be using it to log in and perform work on the IC server. Typically people have named the user object after the actual person and then when a name change occurs they simply delete the old object which I said all of the data generated during this will still be in the database it's not going to be removed and then create a new object. However, a different approach that can also be used, and that's a little bit more dynamic, is you could have a situation where the username or user ID is not tied to the name of the actual person at all. So for instance, first floor, row three, desk one. I've created a user object here that is not tied to the person's name. However, the personal info tab has first name and last name. So you can see here that we could have a first name and last name of John Smith, for example. And if John Smith's last name changes to John Lumberjack, I can simply do that. Now, these changes can be seen as far as first name and last name. Also, this can be used if somebody's name changes, and this is your convention, even though the user object would remain Andrew Cap, you could change the last name to Andrew Cap. I like to be careful of this because it can cause some confusion. I would recommend if you are creating the user objects to be the same name as the actual person, 
then I would delete them and create a new one. That's up to you. Okay, so under the user object in this personal info tab, we have the first name and last name, and these can be leveraged in several places. I just want to point out that if this was linked to a mail server, we will be pulling it from the mail server, this information, and it will all be grayed out. We don't have this linked, so we have control. These will be used in several places. One is in Interaction Center Business Manager. You can actually generate reports based on the last name equaling a certain string or set of strings. It also is leveraged in Interaction Desktop where we have user ID. This tells you exactly where that person is, but then last name and first name. This can sometimes cause confusion because people frequently mix up the name of the user object with first name and last name columns in directory. If we remove that, for example, for Adam.Joel here, if I remove the user ID column, it looks as if Adam Joel does not have a name. That's because they made his name B, the user ID. Versus down here, my very specific user ID is separate from the first and last name of the person, which I can use to generate reports, which we can use to easily look up the person, and which we can change dynamically on the user object itself. Thank you so much for attending this just-in-time video short, and check out some more.